Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited for today's video because I am just going to talk about my favorite romance books because it is February. It's February 3rd right now and I thought what better way to start off the month than just talking about love and romance because you know it's Valentine's Day um, in a couple weeks and it's just the month for love. So yeah I'm just gonna get started with it. I wore my nice pink sweater. I love reading. I love reading romance books. I, re I read like any type of book except fantasy. I will read any book except fantasy because my brain doesn't go there but I love 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 some romance books so I'm really excited to talk about it. So yeah if you want um, some book recommendations or just want to hear me talk about books stick around. So I am going to start off with Mariana Zapata. If you watch my videos, you know that I am a ride or die Mariana Zapata fan. She is like one of my favorite authors. Her romance books like speak to my soul. Look me in the eyes. They speak to my soul. Okay. And it's just that she has like, first of all, it's slow burn. And I love, love, love me a nice slow burn book because I've probably said it in a couple videos. Once they, the characters get together, what's the point? What's the point of reading the book? Because you read the book for the tension and the build-up and for them to get together, like that whole process. Versus, like, that's the whole point. Versus, like, a book where they get together in the first, like, 20%. Like, no, I don't want to read about their relationship. I want to read about them getting to their relationship. So, that's why I love her. So I just would recommend any of her books, but personally my favorite are Wait For It, which is, which follows, it follows Diana, and she is an aunt to two little boys, and unfortunately um, her brother passed away, so the boys become hers, so she's like kind of in this like single mom uh, role. And she gets together with her next door neighbor who just moved, and she just moved into a neighborhood, gets together with their next door neighbor, Dallas, and he is just this amazing guy. He steps up and loves the boys, loves her, and it's just a really cute, sweet book. And just like her writing and everything is so good. So I love that one. I love The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. It is the end of football season. I definitely picked that one up. It follows Aiden and Vanessa, and Aiden is an NFL player, and Vanessa is his assistant, but they get into a, like, marriage of convenience. That is the main trope of the book, um, due to, like, I don't know, like, I think it's a green card marriage because he's from Canada. So they get together and it follows them and their story, and then... I also love All Roads Lead Here by her, and that follows Aurora and Tobias. Um, he goes by Rhodes, and she is kind of restarting over in her life and moves back to her hometown in Colorado and ends up renting an apartment on some person's property, but the guy doesn't know so because he has a 15-year-old son. So he doesn't know that his son tried to rent out the space to Aurora, and she's like, really need a place to stay like I just want to start over get my life together and so then if all is done that it's like um, forced proximity and that one is a really great book too it's just so like it's like I don't know I don't know how to describe it it's like kind of grumpy sunshine and she's just like restarting over in her life and Mariana really writes like very great female main characters like super focused and driven they have their own life their own identity apart from these guys and it just shows like a really healthy relationship which is a pet peeve in some of the books that I read it's like the main characters aren't mature enough or you can just tell that it's not a healthy relationship and it's just like toxic and whatever so I feel like I try to stray away from those books because it kind of skews like your point of view on certain things and what I love about Mariana is, is that all of her books are like super healthy relationships the they both have like their own separate lives and like can come together and like work together really well and form a very healthy and beautiful relationship so I love 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 her books so she's like my favorite romance like one of my favorite romance authors all of her books are great and they're just really fun to read they are very big though, like 500 pages, but I promise it's worth it. 
if you just stick it out and some of them start off really really slow so you have to get to like the 20% mark and then you just start flying through it. I just personally like her writing style so I'll read anything that she writes. I will literally read her grocery list if she publishes it because that's how much I love her writing. And the next books, this one is a series that I'm really getting into is the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver and I have read four of her books like starting in the new year so it's been a month. I've read four of her books. I'm currently currently reading the fifth one right now and I did a reading vlog on this but I am obsessed with this series and not all of them are five star reads for me like some of them are like four or four and a half some are five but overall the series is just really fun for me to read it's like kind of fluffy it has like deals with some difficult themes but overall like the setting is super fun it's like set on a ranch great banter and some of the books like the female main characters they have such good banter with the guys that it's like so funny to read about like I will be like smiling or laughing reading some of these lines because just the author is so funny when she's writing these characters and writing these books like the plot and some of the stuff that she like she writes I'm like I will warn you, this series is rated R. I personally am not very mature, so I'll get to some scenes and I'm like, oh, didn't, wasn't expecting that, did not expect that. Just keep in mind that some of the stuff is a little graphic and I was like, ooh, skipping that, but that's just me. I'm just not very mature. I personally don't like to read about that, but like, who am I to judge? But that's just a heads up. Yeah, so I'm reading Hopeless right now, and it goes, it goes flawless, heartless, powerless, reckless, hopeless, I think is the series. And it all follows, so it follows three main brothers, the Eaton brothers, and then their family friend, and then one of the brothers' um, girlfriend's sister, and like their friend. So it's five books. The characters are pretty intertwined and it sound, it's kind of like a found family aspect with some of the characters. Like one of them, the brothers kind of just like adopt him into the family because he's facing some difficult circumstances. So that's really like wholesome to read about. And I just, yeah, it's a really fun series. I like fly through these books. Like, I, like I'll wake up and I'm like, wow, I'm looking forward to laying in bed and reading these books because that is how into it and I, I am and how much I love reading them. Just me. I think that these books are great. It might not be everyone's cup of tea. Like sometimes sometimes with romance books, like you'll cringe out reading a line and like that's just a part of the process. So no shame. These books are great in my opinion. And if you're in the mood for like a fun country western found family just they have like these books have every single trope we have accidental pregnancy which i didn't think i'd like that book but i do i really did like it we have single dad uh childhood friends to lovers um grumpy sunshine fake mar fake fiance so fake dating so all of those book tropes are in these series so kind of there's a book for like each type of mood and each trope and yeah in my opinion, I love it. And I would definitely recommend it to people. The that I chose is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. And this is part of the Knockabout series. However, I personally just really like the first book the best. Like I read the other two and I like them, but they're not my favorite like the first one is. So this book follows Naomi and Knox. And Naomi is like this runaway bride and she lands in this small town and finds out that her twin sister, she has an evil twin sister, that her evil twin sister has a child. So naturally that makes Naomi the aunt, right? Well, the evil twin sister abandons the child and Naomi's like, well, I can't just leave this kid. So she starts to take care of her and so she kind of gets in this like single mom, single aunt trope. She's like ran away from her wedding. So she, her like life is super disorganized, but she lands in this town and Knock is this, or Knox, I don't know why I said Knock. So Knox is this like grumpy town, like it's a really small town. So it's a small town trope. 
Same with Chestnut, Se Chestnut Springs. That one is also a small town trope, which is super fun. Super grumpy guy, like doesn't really like anyone, enjoys his like small town life. And so then she comes in and he's like, well, I don't want her here. But then as they start to get to know each other and then see her take care of her niece and it becomes kind of this like found family because um, her friend, she has like a friend that lives with her and like his him and his friends and brother, like it all kind of meshes together well. So that's really nice to read about. It was a nominee for the best romance book for Goodreads. If you're looking for some credibility there. Really good. This one is also long too. It's a slow burn. It's not as slow burn as Mariana's Pato's books. It's like 500 pages. So it is long. But I find myself like just flipping through the books. And like flying through it. And there are some parts where I'm like, it doesn't really need to be this long. But just makes that build up worth it. it just makes it a little bit sweeter so i really like that book and yeah i would recommend the series but personally things we not never got over is my favorite and that's why i'm including it in my favorite in this like favorites video um because i really liked it and then the next book is the brightest light of sunshine and this is by lisnia connie so i read this book over winter break and i think i saw like literally one tiktok about it you know those like book talk where by a little bit plot of the book or like a scene in the book and you're like shoot i want to read that so i think i saw like one tiktok about it and i was like all right i'm gonna like go see if it's on like amazon or kindle unlimited or whatever and it was on kindle unlimited kindle unlimited and i was like shoot i want to read this it seems interesting and i read it and i loved it and i expected i didn't expect myself to like it as much as i do but it follows um this couple so it follows grace and cal and cal is um this like tattoo artist and he has to take care of his little sister because his mom is like or, like her parents aren't that great like his mom is kind of an alcoholic so he takes care of her a lot and grace is recovering from some trauma in her past and she's like ready to finally go out and date again and these two meet and they become really good friends so this is friends to lovers and cal like doesn't want to start anything or like drag grace into this whole like custody battle that he's about to get in with his mom over his little sister and grace is like still healing from her trauma in her past but i think that this book was really well done it addresses some things that like some more difficult topics and um yeah so they start out as friends they turn into lovers it's a classic um there's some parts in the book where grace the main character i was like cringed me out i'm like girl you really said that like that's awkward um but other than that it was great like sometimes the female main characters and stuff i'm like please please don't like please shut up do everyone a favor and stop talking because you're embarrassing yourself and you're embarrassing me as the reader and we both don't want that. So that's just my opinion on some of the stuff. I was like, oh, this is mm, what she's saying is not cute, but okay. so is life. As my roommate says, so is life. So yeah, but if you can overlook that, it is really good. And her next book, so that follows Cal's little sister, so the one he was having like this custody battle over. It follows her uh, like in the future and it comes out really soon, in, like a week or so. So I'm really excited to read that book and I'll keep you guys updated. It's called The Darkest Corner of the Heart and I'm really excited to read it because I like the first book. I like her writing style. If the main character isn't super cringy and embarrassing, then I think I'll like it. Let's get into Allie Hazelwood, shall we? So, I read three of her books. I read The Love Hypothesis, Love on the Brain, and Love Theoretically. I personally really liked um, lo The Love Hypothesis and Love Theoretically the best. I liked Love on the Brain, but not as much. Like, I think it was like a three and a half or a four star read for me. Ellie Hazelwood's book, I Will Devour. I Will Eat Them Up. Anything that she writes is so good. And like, I am not a STEM person. Oh, like I don't 
vibe with math or science or whatever but she will write her books in a way that's like really easy to understand like or she'll write the math and the science in a way that's easy to understand and I'm like girl which is really helpful because I'm like I'm just here for the romance I'm just here for the plot of the book I'm not here to get a math lesson but the way she explains that I'm like oh I'm kind of smart for understanding that like thank you Allie um anyway so she does have some like science stuff in her books but it's pretty easy to understand and you will you will feel smart after reading it. The love hypothesis is this fake dating trope between a PhD student and a professor, which pretty sure violates like HR, but whatever. We're like Title IX or whatever. But it's fictional, so we'll read about it. She's trying to like get published, and he is this like moody professor who is um, like trying to clean up his reputation or whatever. I don't know, but. Do men really need to have their reputations fixed? Like, they'll be fine. Start big dating, and it's really cute. And the only thing is, it is written in third person. So if you don't like that, like, I personally don't like books that are written in third person, but I still read it and still loved it. But that did kind of catch me off guard. When I first started reading it, I was like, oh, I don't know how I like this. But it's pre pretty easy to understand. And, like, I liked it. Obviously, I loved the book. But... That's something to keep in mind. And it, this book just brings me back to like 2021 book talk when everyone was recommending like Colin Hoover, The Spanish Love Deception, The Love Hypothesis, and all of these books. I'm like, wow, I miss those days. Like, let's bring back those days of book talk. Love theoretically like edges out the love hypothesis a little. And this book is so good. It follows this girl and guy. They've had like this, like, this like feud or whatever. And they like an online feud I think and then they meet years later and she's like interviewing for this job and he is like super protective of her like only wants the best like golden retriever vibes like only wants the best for her like supportive man and she's like this struggling I think grad or PhD student and really needs this teaching position and there's it just shows a little bit about like academia politics and like how that hiring system works but it's really cute and I loved it. I think I remember reading this on a plane and I was like in my plane seat with my Kindle like giggling and like smiling the whole time because it was so good and I like could not put it down. I think I was on like a flight from the east coast so it was pretty long like five hours and I was just like the whole time like reading it because it was so good and I literally could not put it down. So I really want to read Check and Mate by her and then she has this like new YA like fantasy book coming out and I know I said I don't do fantasy so we'll see how I feel about it but I feel like since she's written like contemporary romance books like it might be a little bit easier to understand but we'll see. So the next book is Tokyo Ever After by Nico Jean and I don't know why I don't see more people talking about this book. It is YA and it was part of Reese's book club but I haven't seen like anyone on the internet talk about it so I am here to do my duty to this book and talk about it right now. So this is, um, this follows this girl who is in her senior year of high school and she is Japanese and she's like going through the motions of school and whatever and she has a single mom, doesn't know who her dad is, the mom won't tell her and then one day she finds out, she does this like DNA test or she finds out somehow uh, that her father is like the prince or the king of Japan and she has like royal blood in her She's like what the heck like I don't first of all I don't I didn't know who my father was for like 17 years of my life and then I find out he's this like Japanese prince and she's like shoot well like, I want to go meet him and so she flies to Japan to kind of like figure out this like this new life that she has for herself like being a freaking princess like it's kind of like the like, princess diaries like hello like oh, is that not the dream to like one day discover that you're a princess like that would be amazing but here's the thing she falls in love with her bodyguard yeah you heard that right you, you yeah yeah you heard that right and it is so wholesome and cute because it's like YA which also YA books are underrated because like young adult books because there's not like any swearing or just graphic stuff in it you, most of the time 
the characters will be a little bit cringy but like that's the trade-off that you have to get and it's just so wholesome and yeah so they like fall in love and meet and so then she's trying to figure out like her relationship with her dad her relationship with japan being like a japanese princess and then this new bodyguard that's in her life and so it's trying to figure out all of these things but i think that it was super well done it was fun to read it was engaging it was quick it was like 300 pages and i think it's like a great summertime read super lighthearted and just a fun little book to pick up so i definitely would recommend that because i don't know why more people aren't talking about it because it's amazing and then my last one my top top favorite books as of now and i'm sure my taste and books will change as i just like mature and read more books so it's cool i think it's gonna be cool like in a year from now looking back at my videos and being like oh wow like you like that book or this book or whatever when like your taste and books has completely changed like who knows maybe i'll be a fantasy girly by then and look back at this video and laugh i don't know who knows what 21 year old Siri will do the last book is book lovers by emily henry duh like here's the thing with emily henry i will read every single one of her books but are every single one of her books five star reads to me no and before you get upset i have my reasons one did not like beach read and like that may be super unpopular because like that book is like everybody's kryptonite like people eat it up reread it annotate it whatever i personally just never got got it like i never understood the hype i read it once i tried re rereading it again because i'm like there's something that i'm missing because everybody is eating up this book and i don't like it and like that's it maybe it's i just didn't like the book but i still gave her a chance i loved book lovers I've read all four of her books. This one is my favorite, and it follows um, Nora, and um, she goes into this, like, small town because her sister is about to have, is pregnant, so she's about to have a kid, and her sister's like, I just want like, a couple weeks with you just to, like, go into this small town and bond, like, sisterly bond, whatever. You're a workaholic. You need to stop. So Nora's like, okay, like, I'll spend, like, a month with you gets to this small town in like North Carolina and discovers that her like enemy in the workplace is there too and that he his family owns this like super cute bookshop in there and she's like what the heck because they so they both work in the literary world so it's funny it's called book lovers and she's like what the heck are you doing here like I'm here with my sister in this like middle of nowhere North Carolina town and he's like well I'm actually from here and so then they start to get together and hang out they keep running into each other because it's a small town trope and it's really cute Charlie is like super secure in himself like love like will support Nora and whatever she does like hypes her up Nora's a strong independent woman like we love that so I think that that was really great to read about and it was just really fun and like i was saying about mariana's Zapata's books like all of the characters it, even in all of these books are very like well developed and very like they have their own things going for them outside of this like budding romance like they have careers and family and all of these things supporting their life very headstrong independent smart woman and these men add something into their lives so it's just like in my opinion how all relationships should be so you're reading about like really well-developed fun relationships and i think it's just really great and wholesome okay so those are my official picks for my favorite romance books to recommend in february and i'm sure i'll go on read a ton more books give you all recommendations as the months go on but I thought it would be fun to do because February is the month of love and who doesn't love to read about some fun romance books? Like, I know I do. And if you're watching this video, you probably do too. So really excited about that. And yeah, these are all my opinions. You may have different ones and that's okay. That's why we're human, multi-dimensional um, human beings. Chose like my favorites as of now because like I said earlier, ratings change. I'll, like. I'll look back at books I rated five stars years ago and I'm like can't even remember the plot of the book so just something to keep in mind but 
yeah, I hope that you got something out of this video, got a couple book recommendations, maybe agreed with me on a couple of things, so that'll be fun. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye!